We're in the process of sending two of the latest model of the Raspberry Pi computer up to the International Space Station. The Raspberry Pi Foundation is so proud to work in collaboration with the European Space Agency to offer young people a completely unique, real-world experience of using their coding skills in this world and beyond. It will be joined by some new sensors, a new high-quality camera and all wrapped in a special case to make it ready for the rigours of space travel. There's going to be a PIR sensor on the Astro Pi so young people can detect movement. So if an astronaut is walking by the, the hardware, it should detect it. There's also a colour sensor on there. We will also be sending up the Coral machine learning dongle and this will allow young people to participate in some machine learning experiments. One of the really big changes is that we will be flying a high quality camera this time. This means that the young people are going to be, that participate are going to be able to take some amazing photography down on Earth. We'll also be flying a 5mm lens on top of that. The photography is really going to take a big step up. One of the main differences with uh, the, the new hardware, if you remember the old Astro Pi hardware, you could see the LEDs, the individual LEDs of the SenseHat matrix. With the new hardware, they're hidden behind a pair of almost like sunglasses there. And that's because in the time between the original hardware being sent to the space station and the new hardware going up, the safety restrictions on bright lights have changed. So it turns out that the LEDs on the SenseHat could be too bright for the astronauts if they looked at them for a long time. So we've had to include this nice filter on there to um, protect the astronauts' eyes. The specific requirements of the brief for AstroPi 2 were to preserve so much of, of AstroPi so that the physical device is instantly recognisable, it's part of the family of Raspberry Pi AstroPi devices. It has a physical shape that is defined by having access to the connections on the side faces in just the same way that the original Astro Pi was, but also needs to be able to accommodate all of the extra functionality that we're adding into the new computer. The camera lenses on the bottom, the protection for the camera lenses and the legs that we've added, all of the extra details on the front face, and all of that within the confines of the established Astro Pi case. I can't just send the 3D model to the manufacturer. I have to tell them what material I want to use, how I'd like it to be finished. Five axis machining is an incredible process. It enables designers like me to design parts that can be manufactured with, with almost any shape these days. And the five axes are, if you can imagine, this part is being held in a machine on a bed so the unit is held and three axes are side to side, in and out and up and down. The five axes are the same three, but the head itself can rotate through two different planes. And that gives us the five axes so you have a machine that can come in and caught the machine away almost by magic. But also we finish it with a process called anodizing. And the anodizing then enables us to laser etch graphics onto the outside of the case. We've add, added Certec to the cases and they've done some really fine detailed laser etching work on there as well so that the astronauts can know which port um, is to be used for different things and it's really clear exactly where all the parts of the Astro Pi are. And they were also involved in helping us make sure that they were EMC compliant. EMC is electromagnetic compatibility and it's part of the integration testing. Every time you know, electrical pulses go, it can, it can cause uh, radio frequencies to be emitted. The reason we do this test is because we don't want to be causing interference to any other radio spectrum users on the space station. There's also a power integration test that we had to do, which is to do with the compatibility with how we receive power from the space station. And obviously the sharp edges inspection, which is usually the last thing you do. Um, because once you've done the sharp edges inspection, you're not allowed to change anything. Once once you've done all these tests, you get this certificate, which allows, which is that your your sort of ticket to go on the launch vehicle, if you see what I mean. We had to write custom versions of the OS for every single test we took. So the vibration test, the EMC test, 
uh, the PSU test we run, all of these tests are required custom version of the OS. Sending hardware and software to space is, sounds really exciting that there's a lot of steps that you need to go through. Software is the, is the invisible aspect of it. I think that all of the programs that ESA has sort of stand out in their own way. With Astro Pi, obviously, you're you're sending something that you have made yourself um, into space, and uh, you know that gives you the sort of feeling that you are contributing to spaceflight or you're participating in spaceflight. The Raspberry Pi team I work with has some phenomenal people, but none of us are aerospace engineers. When ESA asked us to get new Astro Pis ready and certified for space, we found it really challenging we've had to try lots of things, some of which didn't work. But thanks to our friends at ESA and all the people who've shared their unique expertise and knowledge with us over the last couple of years, we've managed to take two ordinary Raspberry Pi computers from the production line in Wales and see them end up on the International Space Station. And it's been a real privilege to get to work with such an amazing group of space professionals. It's been an incredible challenge to get these AstroPi computers ready for their journey. But now we've filled out all the forms, we've completed all the tests and they're on board the International Space Station. <laughs>